In this video, you'll learn how to use OpenAI function calling by creating a simple um, application that extracts the um, exercise uh, details for a human based on the message being provided. So let me give you a very quick uh, example of how this works. Okay, so let's open up the program. So let's say um, I'll say something like uh, done 33 push-ups and 19 um, pull-ups. Right, you can see that the OpenAI uh, model is able to output the um, structured data in JSON format. Push-ups 33, pull-ups 19. Okay, let me make it a little bit bigger. Right, so if I say something like um, completed 30, uh, maybe like mm, 19, uh, 12 push-ups. <coughs> okay, you can see that the function the argument that's being written is just push-up with a value 12. So let me show you a step-by-step -step process on how we can actually create this. So let's build this thing a step-by-step. -step. As you can see, I've just opened up a Visual Code Studio. It is a fresh state. There are no files yet. I have my uh, terminal over here right at the bottom. First thing I'm going to do is to um, create a virtual environment. I'm going to type python 3 -m -v -e -n -d -v -e -n -d, And it's going to create the uh, virtual environment a folder. Next, I'm going to activate the virtual environment. I'll type source v -e -n -v bin activate. How do I know whether I've successfully entered? You type pip uh, dash v. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit too big. <laughs> All right, uh, pip dash v. Uh, as long as you can see uh, v e n v, you have successfully entered the virtual environment. Clear this. Right. Um, next thing, I'd like to create the index.py file. Leave it empty first. And I'd like to create a dot env file. In the dot env, I'm going to include the first uh, key. Let's call it open ei. Uh, OpenAI API key. Include your OpenAI API key over here. Don't worry, I will delete off this API key, so there's no misuse after this video. Go back to index.py. Uh, right. Um, let's see how we're going to be doing this. Right. The first uh, package that we'll be using is called OpenAI. As you can see right now, we don't have an OpenAI package because we have not installed it. Right. So let's type pip install OpenAI. Okay. It's uh, telling me to upgrade, so I'll just upgrade. Okay, as you can see, even though I've already installed OpenAI uh, package, um, it is still telling me that it cannot be accessed. Right. So the reason for that is because my Python interpreter has not been changed to the uh, virtual environment. Right. So if you look at the uh, bottom, okay, look at the bottom right, you can see these funny numbers here, 3 point something something. Your uh, Python version is probably going to be different from mine, uh, but it doesn't matter. You click on this, you can see that there's a recommended uh, version. Okay, there's a recommended version. Uh, click on it. Once you click on it, you can see that the uh, OpenAI is successfully imported. Now, First thing we want to do is to set the OpenAI API key. OpenAI.API uh, key. And in order to use the um, in order to use the value in .env, we will have to use uh, we have to import the OS. We're gonna type a and also we're gonna import the uh, load uh, 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 .env uh, function. We'll type from .env. Alright, it seems like we don't have this uh, package yet, so let's install. Click install python dash .env. Okay, give it a while dot env import load underscore dot env call this load dot env okay this is to load the environment variables um and in order to use the environment variables we're going to use os dot environment and we'll have to go to dot env file copy the openai api key the name of the key and paste it over here now our initial setup is done right so uh, good job of following so far uh let me continue so the next thing that I will be doing is to create a function that um, that will record the exercise uh, detail. So let's call it, um, define this function as a record exercise. Okay, and it's going to take in push up, it's going to be a string, and it's going to take in pull up, it's going to be a string as well. Now, uh, let's just uh, print uh, what we have uh, received over here in the record exercise function. Push up is equals to um, push up, right? Let's do the same for pull up. And we want to see what is the uh, data type that we are getting for push up. Is of type for pull up. We're going to see what type is it. Pull up. Okay. And uh, once we have received the uh, push up and pull up, we're just going to return something like uh, uh, completed. Uh, I'm going to use the F string. 
completed push ups and the number of pull up okay so in this instance actually we need to be very careful um, because we'll encounter a later uh, some error later on um, but for now let me just leave it as it is first we will start to put in some sort of validations uh, as we go through this exercise okay so just uh, we'll put something simple here first the next thing that i want to create is called the chat completion type open ai dot chat completion create give it a model name gp3 3.5 turbo 0613 this is the model that we need to use um and the next thing is called the messages messages is an array and there's going to be functions it's an array of functions and for the function call for now i'm just going to set it as auto first i will explain to you what it means okay and for this uh, chat completion the response we will store it in a response a variable right for messages um okay let me explain to you why we have to use this model first right so at all, as of the creation of this uh, video uh gp there's gp3 uh, 3.5 and gp3 4 um, but of course, you know, GPT-4, it's, uh, it's, it's so much uh, pricier. So just for demonstrations, I'm going to use GPT-3 3.5. And you have to specifically use a 0 0.6, I mean a 0 0.6.1.3, ending with this 4, GPT-3 3.5. So this is a model that actually supports this uh, function calling. Right, so for the messages, these are just the messages between the uh, system as well as the a user or perhaps the assistant. So let's include the first message. For the first message, I always like to include the uh, system message. Okay, so it's, it follows this format where you specify the role. The role is going to be a system because it's a system message. And as for the content of the message, it falls under content. Right, so because this is going to be, uh, the AI is going to be acting sort of like uh, as a uh, fitness trainer. I'm just going to call it uh, that, hey, you know, uh, as, a, as a fitness trainer, your role is to record um, the exercise uh, details uh, given. Right, just like that. Okay. It is always a good practice to include a, uh, a system message, right? So that you uh, are giving the AI some context in terms of what uh, he or she is uh, working on. As for the next message, I'm just going to put a user message. For a user message, I can say something like, I just uh, I just did uh, 25 pull-ups and also 13 push-ups. I feel good, right? Just, just something like this, right? So next, we're going to look at the functions. For functions, we are basically just uh, telling the a model uh, AI model, uh, what are the functions that uh, they can work with? So the f because right now I only have a one function, which is called a record exercise. So I'll have to specify it over here. It is in the object. I give it a name. The name is going to be called record exercise. The description is very important. As for the description, I'll just say uh, use this when you need to record the exercise details. Well, exercise details, just like that, right? So description is very useful because um, it gives the AI the uh, context in terms of what are the uh, uh, appropriate functions to use in different settings. Uh, in our case right now, because we are just demonstrating the simple capability of a function calling, where we only have a one function, uh, to be honest, the uh, description uh, doesn't really matter that much. Um, but again, it is a very, very a, a good habit to just include an appropriate description to give the AI context in terms of a which function to choose uh, to perform uh, which action. Right? Now, now that we have uh, included the first function, the function name and the description, the next thing we need to do is to include the uh, parameters. For the parameters, the type, um, it's going to be object as for the properties in the properties in the properties of this uh, function uh, the name there are two of it uh, is called push up and pull up okay so let's call the first one push up push up this first property is going to be of the type string as for the description of this property i'll just say this is the number of uh, push up completed Okay, just like that. For the second property, I'm going to call it uh, pull up. Okay, as you can see over here, second property is called pull up. For the type, again, it's going to be a string. For the description, let's call it number of pull up completed. All right, I think we are done with the functions. Right, as for the last one, function call, uh, I'll just put it as uh, auto. When I put it as auto, I'm basically giving the AI full autonomy, giving the AI the this the, the rights to make any decisions as to which function uh, uh, to call, all right? Now, let's see this in action. So we have captured the uh, chat completion uh, written uh, response in the uh, response uh, variable. So let's print out the response variable and see what it looks like. Uh, because it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a dictionary. So I'm just going to use JSON dumps to print it neatly. Right, so once I'm done, I call Python 3 index 
dot py. Let's see whether it works. All right, it seems to be working. So let me just uh, enlarge the terminal. Okay. Okay, let me make this a bit bigger. Okay, a bit smaller. <laughs> okay. So you can see that the response object look like this. You can see that there's a lot of details. Uh, it'll tell you how much a, a token you have uh, used in total. In this case, it's 129. Um, the more useful information is actually the uh, choices. Within choices, you can see that the assistant has uh, responded, and it, it is telling us which function which function uh, that it is calling. Okay, And the function being called is called the record exercise, the one that we supplied. And the arguments, the beautiful thing is that the AI is able to extract the uh, pull-up count and the push-up count into a string representations of a JSON object. This is huge. Right. So next thing that we'll need to do is to just extract this information out. Okay, let's see how we can do that. So now that we have a response object, um, we will need to navigate this uh, response object for a bit. So the first one being I need to go to choices. And then within choices, I will take the first element. So within choices, I'll take the first element. This is the first element. And within the first element, I will take I will just check whether there is a message. Okay, there should be a message, right? So we don't worry too much about error handling for now. Okay, so we're just taking the message. This is the one that we're accessing right now. Um, and the thing that we're interested, in, uh, interested on is the function call, right? Before I call the function call, I'll just need to check whether function call is inside the object, just to be safe. The function call is in this uh, response message. Okay, let me store this response message in a variable. So this is neater. If function call is in response message, then we will extract the function call object. Let's call it function call. Within function message, we will extract the function call. And we will also extract the function name within the function call. And we will also extract the function arguments. All right. Now, uh, Let's see whether we have any error for now. Let me just print out the function name. Function name chosen. Function name. Function arguments extracted. Function arguments extracted. All right, let's just run this again. All right, you can see that we have successfully extracted the function name that's been called, as well as the uh, function arguments in JSON format. This is really cool. All right, now, for the uh, function argument, currently it is still, I think it is still in a, uh, perhaps in a string format, so we're gonna use the JSON loads just to load it to become a dictionary. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is that we like to pass this function arguments into the record exercise function, okay? So let me just say that, oh, if uh, function name is equals to uh, record exercise, we will call the record exercise function by passing the function argument over here. Okay, we're going to start to unpack it by putting a two asterisk. Cool. All right. Now, function uh, the record exercise is returning us the uh, string. So let's print out the string. Let me just call it a response, AI response. Okay. And let me print out the AI uh, response. I'm going to do it like this. See whether this works. AI response. Okay, let me run the script again. All right, you can see that the AI managed to pull the number of push-ups and the number of pull-ups. Let me make it a little bit bigger. This is the AI response. Okay. Now, the uh, function will fail when we call something like this. Let's say I think it will fail. Let's say. Um, for the user message, you can just change it to I just did 25 pull-ups. Let's see what happens. Right, missing one argument, right? So what happens is that um, if the AI decides to call the record exercise, which expects two, um, two, two uh, arguments, and you only provide one, you can see that the function argument extracted is only pull-up. So because of this, the function failed. So to handle this, we will have to include a none for pull-up and a none for push-up. So that's how we're going to handle it. And of course, uh, we don't want to print uh, empty stuff over here. So let's say 
I'm just going to create a new variable called push up count. The push up count is going to be the push up that is being indicated. If push up is not none, else I'll put a zero. I'll do the same for pull up. Pull up, I'll do the same. Okay, if you try to run the script now, it should work. All right, we can see. Oh, it's still none. Mm, what's happening? Pull up. Oh, right, right. That's because I have not replaced the variable with the correct variable. <laughs> okay. Make sure that you replace the return uh, string the, with the correct variable. Now run it again. Ah, okay. <laughs> I forgot to save. I'm so sorry. Okay, let me run it again. All right. You can see that the uh, AI response is completed 0 push-up and 25 pull-up. <laughs> right, so actually at this point, um, you should have a rough idea what the uh, function, uh, how to use the uh, function uh, calling feature from OpenAI in a most simplistic manner. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, for those of you who like to extend this a little bit further, you could even go on to create more functions and include it within the uh, functions array over here. Uh, so I guess uh, that's it. Um, I hope, uh, you know, this video has been uh, useful for you. Uh, if you find it useful, um, please, uh, you know, give this video a like, uh, you can share it. Uh, I hope that uh, it has uh, helped you in terms of your learning journey. Um, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video.